asked his opinion about Sultan and mentioned that I had heard some persons placed him in the rank next to himself as a general. He replied, he is an excellent minister at war or major general of an army. One knows much better the arrangement of an army than to command in chief. Some officers of the 53rd told Madame Bertrand that Sir Thomas Reed had said that Bonaparte did not like the sight of them or any other red coat as it put him in mind of Waterloo. Madame Bertrand assured them that it was directly contrary to everything that he had ever expressed in her hearing. The same was mentioned to me yesterday by Lieutenant Fitzgerald and Mackay, the 28th informed that the famous letter was shown to several officers of the army and the navy and probably some copies sent to england a letter given by count wantel on this evening to captain poppleton for the governor expressing a wish that if the governor did not think proper to put matters with respect to passes on the same footing as they were in sir george cockburn's time which had been approved of by his government, he should no longer grant passes to any person. The 30th, Napoleon rose at 3 a.m., continued writing until 6, when he retired to rest again. At 5 o'clock, Count Bertrand came to Captain Poppleton and told him that the emperor desired to see him. Poppleton, being in his morning walking dress, wished to retire and change, but was desired to come without ceremony. He was accordingly ushered into the billiard room in his dishabille. Napoleon was standing with his hat under his arm. Well, Monsieur le Capitaine, said he, I believe you are the senior captain of the 53rd. I am. I have an esteem for the officers and men of the 53rd. They are brave men and do their duty. I have been informed that it is said in camp that I do not wish to see the officers. Will you be so good as to tell them? And whoever asserted this told a falsehood, I never said or thought so. I shall be always happy to see them. I have been told also that they have been prohibited by the governor from visiting me. Captain Poppleton replied that he believed the information which he had received was groundless and that the officers of the 53rd were acquainted with the good opinion which he had previously expressed of them, which was highly flattering to their feelings, that they had the greatest respect for him. Napoleon smiled and replied, I'm not an old woman. I love a brave soldier who has undergone the baptism of fire, whatever nation he may belong to. September 1st, Sir Hudson Lowe came to Longwood two or three days ago. The letter had been shown and read by countless causes to Captain Gray of the artillery and some other officers. Sir Hudson was very desirous to know whether any of them had taken a copy of it. I informed him that any person at Longwood who liked might get one. His Excellency appeared greatly alarmed at this and observed that it was an infraction of an act of Parliament in any person not belonging to Longwood to receive it. He then asked if I had communicated to General Bonaparte what he had directed me to say on the 22nd instant. I replied that I had. That Napoleon had replied that he might act as he pleased, that the only thing left undone now was to put sentinels at the doors and windows to prevent him from going out, that as long as he had a book, he cared but little about it. The governor remarked that he had sent his letter of complaints to the British government and that it rested with the ministers how to act that he had put them in full possession of everything, which he desired me to tell him. He added that it was true he could not be much worse than he was. The fourth told Napoleon that the governor had directed me to say that Count Monsalon's letter had been sent to his majesty's government and that it rested with the ministers how to act, that he had put them in full possession of everything. Perhaps, replied he, it will be published in the English newspapers before his copy arrives. The fifth, Major Gorker came up to Longwood in order to arrange matters with General Montalon relative to the proposed reduction of the expenditure at which he begged me to be present. The 
report of his communication was that when the British government had fixed 8,000 pounds as the maximum of the whole of the expense attendant upon General Bonaparte's establishment, they had contemplated that a great reduction would take place in the number of persons composing it by some of the general officers and others returning to Europe. But as that had not taken place, the governor had, on his own responsibility, directed that an additional sum of £4,000 should be added, making in the whole £12,000 for all at every expense. And General Montsalon must therefore be informed that on no account could the expenditure be allowed to exceed £1,000 per month. Should General Bonaparte be averse to the reduction necessary to bring the disbursements within that sum the surplus must be paid by himself by bills drawn upon some banker in europe or by such of his friends as were willing to pay them count montelon replied that the emperor was willing to pay all the expenses of the establishment if they would allow him the means of doing so and that if they permitted a mercantile or banking house in saint helena london or paris chosen by the british government itself to serve as intermediators through whom they could send scaled letters and receive answers. He would engage to pay all the expenses. That on the one side, his honor should be pledged, that the letters should relate solely to pecuniary matters, and on the other, that the correspondence should be held sacred. Major Gurukur replied that this could not be complied with, that no sealed letters would be suffered to leave Lagwood. Major Gurukur shortly afterwards told Count Montalon that he intended reductions would take place on the 15th of the present month and begged him to arrange matters with Mr. Balcom, the purveyor, about the disposition of the thousand pounds monthly. Unless he chose to give drafts for the surplus, Count Montalon replied that he would not meddle with it, that the governor might act as he pleased, that at the present moment there was not any superfluity of provisions supplied that as soon as the reductions took place he for his part would give up all charge i would not meddle further in the matter that the conduct of the english ministry was infamous in declaring to europe that the emperor should not be suffered to want for anything and refusing the offers of the allied powers to defray a part of the expenses and now reducing him and his suite nearly to rations major goriker denied that the Allied powers had ever made such an offer? Montalan replied that he had read it in some of the papers. Major Gorker then observed that a great reduction could be made in the wine, be that it could be reduced to 10 bottles of claret daily and one of Madeira, that at Plantation House the consumption was regulated on the average of one bottle to each person. Montelin replied that the French drank much less than the English and that he had already done at the emperor's table what he never had done in his own private house in France, i.e. corked up the remnants of the bottles of wine in order to produce them on the table the next day. That moreover at night there was not a morsel of meat remaining in the pantry. Gorker observed that 12,000 pounds a year was a very handsome allowance about as much as four thousand pounds in england replied montalon this business was then deferred until saturday before leaving longwood major gorker himself allowed to me that the establishment could not be carried on for twelve thousand pounds annually but that he thought a reduction of about two thousand pounds yearly might be made i observed that it might provided that a store of everything necessary was established at longwood together with the stockyard under the direction of a proper person? The seventh. Major Gorker came up and had a long conversation with Count Montalon in my presence. The letter told him that orders had been given to discharge seven servants, which, with the consequent saving of provisions and a reduction of wine, would diminish the expenses of the establishment to about 15,164 pounds annually. But that sum, what's the minimum of minimums, and that no further reductions could possibly take place. Major Gorker observed that it was nearly what he had calculated himself. However, he still persisted in declaring that on the 15th, not more than 1,000 pounds per month would be allowed Count Montalon then, after renewing the offer made on the last conversation, said that as the emperor was not permitted by the English government to have access to his property, he had no other means left than to dispose of his property, and that accordingly a portion of his plate would be sent to the town for sale in order to obtain the sum required monthly. 
in addition to that, allowed Vice Hudson Lowe to provide them with the necessaries of life. Major Gorakur said that he would acquaint the governor with it. Sir Hudson Lowe, accompanied by General Meade, who had arrived a day or two before, came up and rode round Longwood. He appeared to point out to the general the limits and other matters connected with the prisoners. At night, Napoleon sent for me and complained of a severe headache. He was sitting in his bedroom with only a wood fire burning, the flames of which, alternately blazing and sinking, gave at moments a most singular and melancholy expression to his countenance, as he sat opposite to it with his hands crossed upon his knees, probably reflecting upon his forlorn condition. After a moment's pause, Dottori, said he, can you make a man sleep who is not inclined? This is beyond your art. I have been trying in vain to procure a little rest. I cannot, continued he. Well, cure a little rest. I cannot, continued he. Well, comprehend the conduct of your ministers. They go to the expense of 60 or 70,000 pounds in sending out furniture, wood, and building materials for my use, and at the same time send orders to put me nearly on rations and oblige me to discharge my servants and make reductions incompatible with the decency and the comfort of the house. Then we have aide-de-camps making stipulations about a bottle of wine or two or three pounds of meat.